Hello dear friends, this is Joel Humphreys. I'm glad to be back with you to speak a word in due season and I pray the word will be a good word for you that you'll enjoy it and that it'll be a, a word that will help you find some answers in your life. Just a 10 minute message but it's a message I pray God will make it real in you and your heart. And so I thank you for listening just a few minutes. I want to speak to you and I'm speaking primarily uh, to Christians on this message and that is that there is a battle within. There is an inner battle that uh, Christians fight uh, practically on a daily basis and it's an inner battle and it comes from the Word of God teaches us about this battle. We have within us a desire to serve God but there's also a temptation of the old self to do the thing that pleases self instead of pleasing God. And so it's a battle. We need to learn how to overcome self and live for the Lord. In, the, in the Romans the seventh, seventh chapter, we read a word that is interesting, a word that Paul is writing, and he said, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He was saved and he had a new inward spirit. And he delighted in the Bible. He delighted in the things of God. But he said, I see another law in my members that is working against the law of my mind and, and it's uh, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. O oh, wretched man who I am, who shall deliver me from this death? Then he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I want us to see here the, what he's talking about. We that have been saved and born again and blessed by the Lord and looking to God, we have been washed in the blood, we are made clean, and our names are written in heaven, and so therefore we are on our way to heaven. And yet there is in, within us the capacity to do wrong. The possibility is still there, and the temptations of the flesh are still real, and we still stumble and fall. I know I do, and I know you do. We haven't yet reached that place of perfection. But neither did Paul. Paul said, I have not yet made made perfect. But this one thing I do, I keep looking forward, going on, forgetting the past, reaching out before me today the mercy of God, the grace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit to live for God. And so it is that we find this is true. There is a law within us. And that law, when we're born in this world, we're all born under the law of sin and death. There is no way that a person can keep from sinning uh, who is not a Christian. I mean, he's going to sin and enjoy sinning, and he can't help it. He is born with that. He, it's a law. It's a law like gravity is a law that works, and you can't break it by just yourself trying to do something that you can do. And so there is a law of sin and death that we're born under. But Lord God, thank God, when we're saved, there's a there's a new law that comes in. And I want to tell you about that new law right here. It's in chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For, listen, the law of the Spirit in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so there is a law in here that teaches us and shows us and demands that we do wrong. But when we become a Christian, there's a new law that comes in. It gives us a new heart and a new spirit. And in that new law, we overcome. Praise God. The new law sets us free from the law of sin and death. That means it takes over. It does not eradicate all temptations of sin, but it takes away the power of it, the, the dominion of it, and it does not rule our lives anymore. And now the new law rules. We love God. We love others. We love the Bible. We want to serve the Lord. We want to do what's right. We want to please God. One day we're going to meet God. And we're going to stand before him and we want to be where we ought to be down here so we'll be right with him up there. This is important. And so the new law comes and it breaks the old law. And that's something that we need to see because you see, this new law is one that overcomes and sets us free. Here's the law of gravity, for instance. 
Anything you throw up in the air is going to come down. Uh, that's the law of gravity. Anything heavier than air will fall back. You can throw a rock in the air and it's going to come down. You can throw a peanut up in the air and it's going to fall because it's heavier than air. But take a little bird and throw him up in the air and see what happens. That little bird begins to fly off. You see, the little bird has overcome the law of gravity and it flies off. And so it is with God's children. So it is with a person saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. And a new law comes over and comes in. And now the old law is broken. And he just takes the wings of the dove and flies away. He's overcome the law of the gravity of sin by the power of the grace of God. And so it is with you, my dear friend. You are born again. You belong to God. You're not your own. You have a own host of those that are looking forward to meeting you. And you're going to meet them over yonder on the other side. And God is willing to do what is right for you to get there. And He loves you very much. And the hand of the Lord is upon you. So look to Him and find the peace that God gives. Because there's where it is. Now we find a little, another word in Romans that helps us in this matter. It's over in the Romans, the sixth chapter, and it says, Know this, that that old man, the old man is that old person of sin before you were a Christian. That old man is crucified with Christ. It's crucified. I want you to consider yourself crucified. And then he said that your body of sin will be destroyed so that you should not serve sin. You see, you still, you still sin and make mistakes, Christian. But you don't serve sin. You're not a slave to sin anymore. You're a slave to Jesus. You're a slave to the Lord. And you overcome sin and you cast it out. The Bible says in verse uh, uh, 12 of that same chapter, Romans 6, 12 and 13, Let not sin reign in your body that you should obey it. Just don't let sin reign. Listen, here's the secret. Neither yield your members to sin, but yield yourself to God. See, it's a matter of yielding. It's a matter of who you're going to yield to in here. You're tempted to do wrong, don't yield to that. Say, no, no, I'm going to yield to God. I'm going to yield to good. I'm going to yield to right. I'm going to yield to the truth. I'm going to yield to what God's Word teaches. In order, in order to know what God's Word teaches, you need to read it. Oh, my dear friends, read the Word of God. Understand what God wants you to do. I live for Him by yielding yielding yourself to Him. And as you yield to Him, then the Spirit moves and God blesses you and you're set free. Set free. Praise God. I want you to know, dear friend, that God loves you very much. <clears throat> and when you falter and fall, you're among all others that do the same. But God forgives and God sustains. And the blood has been shed. Those sins have been paid for. All of them. And you're under grace. Hallelujah. You're not under the law anymore. You're under grace. That means that you're saved and you're not going to be judged by the law. But praise God, you're saved by grace. I want you to know that. And Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus is the one that brings us out of the dark into the light. He's the one that, that brings the new law into our lives. And the Holy Spirit takes over in us. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ and He dwells in us. And He helps us to see the truth and walk in it. Dear friend, He wants to live in you today. He wants to overcome that problem you're facing. That time of life in your life when you say, I don't know how in the world this is ever going to work out. You've got to turn it all over to the Lord. Let God work it out. You might say, oh, I've tried and tried and tried again. But you must trust the Lord. The Lord says, wait on me. Wait on me. I'm going to bring you through. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to make you strong. I'm going to give you much. I'm going to love you until the morning comes. And then, praise God, it'll be over. And you'll be with God forever. <clears throat> and so may the land be bright before you. May you find strength to overcome. There is a struggle within, a battle within, a battle in the inner person. It's an inner battle, but you're going to win, Christian, because God is in you, and God will always win. Thank you, and God bless you.